talk about here in a spiritual conversation, but uh, uh, therefore we could not take the responsibility, but something much, 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 I wouldn't say better, but something very interesting has turned up. We found today a retreat center right at the white bank of Mother Ganga. It's uh, about half an hour upstream from Hrishikesh and it is so beautiful, so spiritually rich the atmosphere uh, that uh, mm, many of our retreatants have uh, decided since they had already taken the time out to follow our invitation and come there and we will have the same or a similar retreat uh, as we wanted to do in Wadi Raman. We are still wanting to work at two of you who are sitting right now here. I don't know if you will come. <laughs> uh, after this, uh, I will, we will have to have a serious talk. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, so yes, pilgrimage, crossing the threshold. One of the things pilgrimage teaches all of us is flexibility. You have to see what happens uh, and you have to be again and again willing to mm, drop your own plans and uh, go into the higher, vaster and more, um, more ecstatic plan of the Lord. So it has already started. Uh, the way we will hold this program is we will have about half an hour of kirtan. Uh, I will request Gokushna to lead this kirtan. Muniraj vielleicht, ja, mit Anga. And uh, then I will give my talk on bill crossing the pilgrimage, I, uh, or crossing the threshold, I'm sorry. Mm, what I want to also say is I want to welcome our audience online, uh, which is present now with us and which will see this program a little later. So, so just so that you know, we will chant up till seven o'clock. Uh, and uh, yes, and then we will have the talk. Oh, thank you, Frida. Hare Krishna, Frida. Show it. Can you can you please? Oh, oh, Jaitam. Yes, Jai, please. Namo.
Krishna. Once again, I wish to welcome all of you, those who are known to me, um, those who surprise me that they have an interest in the subject, and those who are also mm, our first time guests. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome in the Dharma Castle. I was originally conceiving this program mm, to be a goodbye program. Uh, uh, I will go on a sacred pilgrimage uh, starting on Monday. I will first go to Haridwar. It's the gate of Hari at the bank of the Ganga. And a little further up, Rishikesh, the place of the saints. Uh, and then after a, something like a week or so, I will proceed to my annual pilgrim goal, Sri Vrindavan Dham. Uh, in some ways, you could say this will be an outer journey. I will totally change my surroundings. I won't be any longer in provincial Neuropin <laughs> or Switzerland or um, Serbia or Italy or wherever I have been this year, I will really break out and go to a completely new place with a total, a total different environment, different customs, different cultures. Uh, but uh, pilgrimage is by no means limited to an, a journey mm, uh, to another place in the world which is different. We only go to a different place when we go on pilgrimage so that we crea create some space, a new space in us where new things uh, can be invited, uh, can, be, can come in. And we want to create space. That means we will stop doing the same things which we do. We will not be surrounded with the same people which we are. We go to a place which is ideally sacred, where people go to uh, intensify their spiritual practices. But this is not the only thing. Because as you might have found out already, wherever you are going, that's where you are. <laughs> In other words, you always take your old self with you. You can be in the most sacred space, in the most blissful program, in the most wonderful uh, uh, place like the Ganga and the Himalayas or Brindavan and the Jamuna and Govardhan. But alas, <laughs> you are taking your, uh, yourself uh, with you. And as uh, Eric er Erickson, the well-known psychologist said, we all carry an identity kit with us. <laughs> kit is something like a uh, bastel uh, Werkzeugkasten. Mm? We have certain things inside with which we construct our, our identity, our value systems, our everything. We all carry this with us, I, me, and mine. And uh, therefore, if pilgrimage is only an external activity, then you have something which the British Basis complain nowadays. You have tourism, a pil uh, pilgrimage tourism, a lucrative new branch of economic income and uh, not something spiritual. No, wherever you go, that's where you take yourself with you. So therefore, pilgrimage first and foremost must be be an internal process. And therefore, uh, I have decided to give this program because I might be able to give you some clues how you can go on pilgrimage by staying in provincial Neuropin. <laughs> ah! <laughs> because uh, you are free uh, inside. You can go wherever you wish. 
you can change the lens on, with which you look on the world and you will see something totally different. This lens, of course, has to be an inner lens. Mm. Do you know that the way you perceive the world is not how the world is? But you always perceive the world through the lens of your mind, how you are. I have been in, in Jaipur and there was a group of Westerners before the Radha Govinda Mandir and uh, all they talked about is how dirty Jaipur is, how many pigs are on the road, uh, <laughs> how disturbing it is that there are no fixed prices in the shops, etc. And all they really wanted is a Coca-Cola. Mm, I told them, listen everyone, they were surprised I was able to address them in German. It was a perfect German pilgrim group with the, or, or tourist group. I said, you are in the wrong place when you look like this. This is a sacred place where you can change your mind. And when you have changed your mind, you will see totally new things. It will be very exciting for you. You will see even in Jaipur, even in all this Indian noise and traffic and uh, chaos, uh, 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 your true self. Uh, well, they said, well, how do we do it? Just step 10 meters to the right and then go straight. I said, what? <laughs> yes, it might sound like Parsival, but this is what it is. Uh, there is an entrance to a temple. Radha Govinda Temple, where people come and uh, engage in devotional activities, uh, where they glorify uh, the Lord, where they see themselves as his part and parcels. And uh, you will make a wonderful experience and you will tell your people in Germany about it. Uh, come on, let's go. <laughs> it was a pilgrimage group of, I believe, 17 or something like this. Uh, only eight people came, but these eight people came back. And uh, mm, uh, yes, they uh, thanked me. My dear everyone, you don't see the world as it is. You see it how you are, how you are programmed, how you are uh, things. Do you know that your mind can only do two things, material mind? It can en either endlessly process your past experiences. You go over your past, what you have, what has happened yesterday, what you have seen in the TV, perhaps of, of the escalating conflict in the Middle East, um, and so on. You go endlessly through this, and you go into the future with your mind based on this, based uh, with your anxieties, with your hopes, with your desires. Not much new things are uh, coming up in a mind that is not uh, receiving help. Uh, the mind, mm, one person has said, I find, found this very much, is both the jailer and the jailed, the prison ward, ward and the prisoner. In Deutsch, der Geist ist sowohl der äh, Gefängniswärter, der den Gefangenen in die Zelle steckt, so, und er, aber er ist auch derjenige, in der, der in der Zelle ist. In other words, our mind is creating our reality, putting us in a certain reality, and uh, we are stuck there. A pilgrim wants to move out of this mm, uh, confining situation. And for this, he changes the external environment, which gives him some freedom. He is no longer in his old activities. And then 
he fills the newly created space with a few spiritual activities which uh, Krishna explains in the Bhagavatam. I, I will uh, soon uh, uh, tell you what, uh, about this. But he, first of all, I would like to say this adventure, this spiritual adventure, to exit your outer and your inner uh, limitations uh, takes place best in so-called tirtas. Tirtas are sacred places in the, and they are crossing point, points where you cross over from a material to a spiritual consciousness, where you, let us say, where you can do it easier. Uh, I want to quote to you uh, a verse uh, from the Bhagavatam. Ma maya javani kachanam akyadokshayam avyayam na lakshase mudadrisha nato nadyadaro yata. Oh, my Lord, this is Queen Kunti. She prays like this after a terrible war has happened, the war, the battles in Kurukshetra, where she has lost uh, her firstborn son and where the world was restructured. It was the most cr cruel uh, and vast battle you have ever seen. And he, she then turned to Krishna in prayer and said, Oh my Lord, you are always beyond the range of limited sense perception. You are a person who is difficult to come close to because before you is a curtain, Maya Javani Kachanam, of Mayik or material energy or illusory energy. You are invisible, therefore to a person who is not yet spiritually enlightened, exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. Mm -hmm. And someone is, is, is well covered by a, a good makeup mm -hmm. and a good dress, you could not see him. As a young person, I knew one, one musician called Keith Richard very well. I mean, pictures, films, music. But then I saw once a, a, a part of a movie which a friend showed me. And uh, he was acting, uh, uh, he was playing a pirate. And I could not recognize the idol of idol, idol or what the idol of my youth any longer because he was covered by so much makeup and so much hair and and what else. So Krishna is covered for most of us conditioned souls uh, uh, by uh, 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 like an actor, and we cannot see him, we cannot even feel him sometimes. Uh, uh, but uh, someone who goes to Brindavan to the sacred place uh, he will by the Shakti which is inherent the Vastu Shakti of Vrindavan Dam have two mm, experiences one is that the covering of Maya will go back will recede go back in the background and then sometimes Krishna becomes visible as a spurti, a sudden appearance in the mind um, and a, a pilgrim will start to pray to Krishna and feel he is close. My friend Burijan Prabhu with whom I have uh, 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 been so fortunate to give retreats in Vindavan Dam. Uh, 
uh, for, I believe, 20 years now. Yes, we are becoming old mm, and energetic. Uh, <laughs> of my good friend Bui Jampabu always says that Krishna anywhere else is covered for our vision, like the sun is covered by these thick curtains. Do you have them in your houses also, these thick curtains that when you want to sleep during the day, you put the thick curtain on and then you cannot see the sun. Do you have, Floria? No? You never sleep during the day, I think. <laughs> you, you are a lawyer. <laughs> No, I have, uh, uh, our Karakanta has put there, when you close the thick curtains, you, you think you are in a cave. You cannot during the day. So Krishna is, nothing goes through this curtain. They, they are made like this. Um, but then there are other curtains. Um, uh, they are the day curtains. They are like gaze you would say and you can see when you stand there you can see the people outside walking and laughing and talking with each other but oh when you put the bit thick curtain you cannot see anyone nor can anyone see you even if you have light in your uh, room so Burijan Prabhu has given this analogy of these two types of curtains in the west he says he, 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 he felt that Maya is uh, very thick, very, and you must agree, she keeps us very busy. <laughs> and in the, uh, in Vindavan Dam, it's like a little day curtain, uh, and Krishna shines through. Now, as long as Lord Krishna was staying in Vindavan Dam, uh, on this planet Earth, uh, everyone could see him. Uh, there was no influence of the age of Kali and no Maya uh, there. But when he left the planet, oof, this Vindavan Dam uh, was uh, uh, coming under the influence of his Antadana Shakti, what that is, we will hear in a moment. Um, uh, the descriptions of Vrindavan when Krishna was present uh, are, are sounding like this. The land there is made out of transcendental gems. The trees fulfill all desires. The water is nectar. The words of the gopis and gopas are like song. Their movement is like dance. And transcendent bliss permeates every corner of that sublime abode. Now, after Krishna disappeared and uh, used his antadana shakti, something else Happened. The holy dam of Krishna's time became unmanifest. If you go now to Braj, you see unkempt hinterland villages. Hinterland, you say in English. Um, uh, you see not transcendental gems on the floor, but plastic bags. The, the trees which are still remaining are constantly cut and make place for the encroaching desert which comes more and more into Vrindavan. And the water is not full of nectar. The water will give you dysentery. <laughs> uh, and uh, instead of hearing the words of the gopas and gopis glorifying Krishnas, you hear the song of modern men, rupee, rupee, rupee. Uh, uh, there is not the sound of Krishna's flute in Vindavan, but there is what is called uh, as the, the constant so sound of the truth speakers. Uh, it's called noise pollution, which is going on, the loudspeakers. 
they are called truth speakers because in Vindavan, every ashram has the feeling if my kirtan is really loud, then it's better than the kirtan than the, uh, uh, than the kirtan of the other ashram. Or if the lecture of so and so Goswami is really very very loudly amplified, it is more true than the more soft uh, <laughs> lecture, true speakers. No. Mm. Uh, so what has happened? Well, when Krishna left the world, he did not leave entirely. Krishna is always with us. He's everywhere. But he's covered by a certain uh, shakti. It's called the Antadhana Shakti. Jiva Goswami says a little bit what the shakti is. Uh, he says, the Lord stayed on the earth for some time. And then by the agency of his Antadhana Shakti, he left and no longer touched the earth. As long as this Shakti, which makes spiritual things invisible, was not there, there in Vindavan there was this great Kadamba tree that is described in the Varaha Purana. And under other great wonders, were manifested to the eyes of the conditioned souls. Um, but when Krishna left, all this disappeared. However, when people like us are touched by his mercy, we are also able to see that, under, that, that, that Kadamba tree and the other wonders of this abode. In other words, the curtain yip, lifts. And I would like to perhaps speak about this in a way that is a little bit relatable. Mm. I want to ask you a question, and according to your perspective, I think you will give an answer. What is this body? Is it a dirty place? Sweaty? Full of stool? Or is it a sacred place? It depends, my dear devotees. If I see it in one way, yes, there are sh there's a human reality. It has sweat and it has the things we take care of in the washroom but I can also see it as divine because I can see it as a place where the soul is present I can see the body as a seat of the soul uh, let me talk in a very simple uh, not a still simple a simpler language I could see people as belonging to different nationalities, holding different opinions, believing in different things. And uh, I could create divisions uh, amongst people. But I can also see them as eternal parts of Krishna. I can see the people with whom I live in the community as, uh, in one way, uh, I can see that perhaps they hold different opinions on different things, different items, uh, diseases, political vis visions, who governs the world, really. Um, or I can see uh, them as great souls pursuing the path of spiritual uh, life. Now, Braja or Brindavan, you can also be seen with a spiritual vision. It's uh, uh, both a choice and um, uh, it is a question whether you are touched by mercy as Jiva Goswami. Uh, says. 
Yesterday, I was phoning with one devotee who was in Vrindavan. And as he was phoning, and as we were phoning, we heard a lot of auto rickshaws around. And I said, um, Vrindavan is full with auto rickshaws now, and full with exhaustion fumes, and full with uh, tourism. And the devotee said, it depends, Maharaj. <laughs> how you want to look in Vrindavan. And I said, so how, tell me how you see Vrindavan. Now, I feel the atmosphere of Krishna's presence. And uh, this comes because I have worked on my uh, mind. I have said in one of your lectures, and you said, the world is not, or let me say here, Vrindavan is not how you how uh, 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 what what um, what you what you see but you see Vrindavan according to how you are how your consciousness is and I have worked hard on putting another set of glasses on <laughs> my eyes and I, I'm very happy with this. The way you go, Krishna will give us a verse now, 10, 29, 27. The way you can change your glasses and change your vision so that you don't see the external things, which uh, is there for the people who are external, uh, but see the things which are internal, is by this. Mm. Shavana Tashanat Dhyanam Mai Bhavo Nukirtanat Natata Sanikarashena Pratiyata Tato Griham. He says, Krishna says, You must know one thing to come close to me is not possible by just staying next to me. You can come close to me only by love. And this love for me arises by the devotional processes of hearing about me, seeing my deity form, meditating on me, and faithfully chanting my glories. The same result is not achieved by mere physical proximity. So please, go back to your homes. <laughs> he says to the wives of the Brahmanas, these wives wanted to stay with him in the forest, mm, uh, but uh, Krishna could see that uh, if he would stay with Brahminical ladies who come from this village of the Brahmanas in the forest, uh, they, they would get so much in trouble if they would stay around him. And he said, this is, you, you go home and you do this and you will see me everywhere in Vrindavan. So what were these things? Hearing about me. The uh, Shastras inform us by going to a holy place, we should not just take a bath and do all the things which we do with our external body. We should find a real saint and listen to him hearing about me the next is uh, seeing my deity form when you stand before the deities in Vrindavan try to always offer something it's symbolic for offering yourself and pray to the Lord, the Lord on the altar my Lord I'm here I'm a Jantu I'm born in this world I'm blind to the spiritual truth. Uh, but I know I'm here accumulating things which I will all lose at the moment of death. Please accept me as your eternal servant. No? This is how you have your darshan. Mm. Don't come empty-handed. Bring something and offer yourself even. Then one should do some smaranam, no, dhyanam, meditation. Uh, we will do some Vrindavan meditation in a soon, soon, because it is by meditation 
that the things from which are usually staying outside are deeply entering our life and, uh, and uh, changing us uh, uh, in, in a way. And by chanting my glories. In, in, if you chant Krishna's holy names with respect and um, some yukta sneha nam it's called, with affection, then something will happen which is described elaborately with a philosophical concept called the spota theory. There will be all of a sudden in your mind, and I I think you all have experienced this already, a sudden ap appearance uh, which is uh, uh, of the Lord. No, you must only uh, chant with affectionate respect. If you do it um, out of, uh, you know, without uh, your mind present, there will not be a spota. There will not be a sudden appearance. Sometimes it's also called spooky. In Brindavan, and I will end here, there are certain uh, threshold guardians. That means Schwellenwächter in Deutsch. That, uh, uh, that is certain personalities who can give you permission to go from the material to the spiritual Brindavan. Uh, most important uh, uh, is uh, perhaps Brinda Devi, the goddess of Vrindavan. Um, if you go in Vrindavan, uh, to Vrindavan, uh, it is very nice if you perform puja to Vrinda Devi or Tulasi Devi. Uh, you could sing, for instance, this song of Vishwanachakavati Thakur. Bhaktiya vihina aparada lakshai kshiptascha kamari sharanga madye kripa mayitvam sharanam prapanna vrinde numaste sharanaravindam Everyone. Vrinde namaste chadanara O Vrinda Devi, I offer my respectful obeisances to your lotus feet. Those who are devoid of devotion to Lord Hari and who are thrown by their offenses into the waves of lust and other inauspicious qualities may take shelter of you. You can worship uh, Brinda Devi as the Tulasi plant. You could also visit her temple uh, in uh, uh, near Nandagram. There is her eternal; she eternally resides there, and he's, she's visible in a beautiful deity form with parrots on her hands. <laughs> I stayed there for two weeks once, and I was able to do some seva for uh, Vrinda Devi in those days. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can also go to, um, there is also Chetrapal Shiva, who is there in Vrindavan as Gopeshwara Mahadeva. There are many, 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 many narrations of devotees who have gone to Gopeshwara, prayed to him, and uh, realized amazing realizations when Gopeshwara waved them through, so to say. You can go to Yamuna, mm, you can go to Purnamasi, or you can go to the dust of Vrindavan. The dust of Vrindavan is originally from these Chintamani jewels, which it's, it's from the Shintamani jewels, not originally, and, and it can fulfill desires like Shintamani. Prabhupada once said, the dust of Hyderabad cannot fulfill your desires. 
<laughs> Hyderabad is an Indian town. Uh, but uh, the dust of Vrindavan can. And therefore, some devotees like to keep dust of Vrindavan on their altar even, in little boxes, mm, and, and so on. No? So these are uh, uh, able to help you to, to move over the, the threshold. There is an amazing story of a, of a musician and actor who was really a woman hunter and he uh, once uh, went after a woman with, with, with serious intentions to, to harm her. So this woman fled and went with a boat over, uh, uh, over the Jamuna and took shelter together with her husband in the home of their guru. So this Guru Maharaj uh, welcomed them and then invited them to come to take prasadam. And when uh, they sat down, there were three plates. They said, Guru Maharaj, we are only two. And uh, the guru said, uh, third person is just now coming. <laughs> and when they looked out of the window, it was that musician, that woman hunter. Uh, uh, when this couple fled by boat over the Yamuna, they had told the other boatmen to just go somewhere else and to not take him, uh, even if he would pay them a thousand rupees. Uh, so this actor this man who was driven by love, uh, not love, lust, I wanted to say, crossed the Yamuna by swimming. <laughs> and when he came out, he had made contact with Yamuna Devi. And he was chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Govinda, Gopal. <laughs> he had been at, uh, he had made that, that uh, step over the threshold. Now, I admit this is a very, very rare story. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have in Vindavan everything nowadays, and that, that covering of Vindavan, there's also you know, the tourism, all kinds of unpleasant things have come there. I don't even want to speak about this, but mm, yes, and people take to these offers by, you know, by this. Anyways, they, they do sinful activities there. But um, uh, if, if you get the mercy, or if you pr it's better to pray for the mercy, really, then you can cross Vindavan. <coughs> Practically, uh, cross into the real Vindavan. Practically speaking, I want to now put my glasses down. Uh, my dear devotees, I have a personal experience of this, and I... I'm always a little bit afraid to go to Vindavan to tell you very personally how I feel about it. Because I am very much aware ab about the external coverings of the Holy Dham because I'm, I'm trying to concentrate my mind and loud sounds are, <laughs> are a challenge. I'm not used to and negotiate loud sounds in, in the West. You know, we have good doors and good windows and and people just don't make such loud sounds on the roads, you know. So I'm always and I'm always thinking, oh no, and what if the mm, this different culture gets on my nerves? I'm not particularly in, impressed by the modern Indian culture, if I'm very honest with you. I'm not impressed at all by the developments, uh, but I'm, of course, I see still the jewels, the remnants of this amazing, amazing, spiritually rich culture there. But uh, modernity is, mm, is difficult for me, so I'm I'm not going to Vrindavan uh, like uh, 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 <laughs> I know I will have to cross a threshold when I'm in Vrindavan. And, uh, to some extent, it's dependent on 
whether I can create space in my mind and fill it with the spiritual lenses through hearing and meditating and darshan and uh, singing the Lord's glories. But more than this, mm, the main thing will happen through grace, through mercy, which will be given by Vrinda Devi, by uh, Shivaji, uh, by Purnamasi, by Yamuna Devi. And for me, as a, as a devotee of Radha and Krishna, more than anything, by Srimati Radha, Radha Rani. So, yes, uh, this is uh, a challenge. It is not, it is, uh, but I believe I have to face this challenge anyways. If I'm not able to cross my material vision, I will never understand that I'm an eternal soul. I will never understand that uh, uh, Krishna, uh, Krishna's glories and beauty. My understanding will be very provincial, very German-like, which is... Um, in the scriptures, it is said, it's construction of the mind is not Krishna. You know, Krishna is appears in the purified mind on his own volition, an eigenen Wunsch. So, uh, yes, um, uh, I do have to cross. Uh, uh, and uh, I have to, therefore, go on pilgrimage every year and try and I, I must tell you, every pil pilgrimage was the most excellent experience up till now. But still, I'm trembling. I need your mm, your encouragement. Uh, and uh, yeah, I good. So, my dear everyone, I want to now, as I said to you earlier, uh, Vindavan going to Vindavan is an internal journey. I would like to make a little meditation with you. Is that all right? Yes. yes. Good. <coughs> that was a, a loud yes. Wonderful. My God. Hmm. There's an ancient text by Prabodhananda Saraswati, but I will just let you know about him. We, we will not yet start meditating. He starts out with withdraw your vision from the outside world. We will do this in a certain way. But, uh, and then you need to withdraw from the network of Maya. Chant the holy name and gain strength to do this. Give up your anatas and attachments and envy on other people. And then he says, place your attention into the heart. Do some breathing and then try to envision the lightness and uh, the light. Uh, the unlimited vast effulgence of Brahman. And in that Brahman, see, uh, like an island in an ocean, the land of Vindavan. So this is an ancient meditation text. I, I don't think it will work in modern ways. Divyat, Vrindaranya. I want to just uh, start in a very simple way. Mm, mm. Perhaps we will close the door now because I can see devotees are, are already preparing or serving, putting the meal there for us. We want to uh, serve you with some prasadam. Mm. So, those who are in the internet, put your, com put your bag of popcorn to the side now. <laughs> or whatever you do. Uh, you, um, multitasking <laughs> and uh, please sit down before your computer <laughs> like like everyone here if we can show you uh, you can take an example of these glorious souls here who are with us see how they sit and how they will meditate there's Bhagavad Dhamma who will soon be in full samadhi <laughs> 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 <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, good, 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 good. Mm. Hare Krishna. Yes. So, Raga, willst du meditieren mit uns?
Do you want to meditate? Yes, good. Come here, Raghav. Then I see you, and then I can encourage you a little. Uh, maybe, perhaps, here next to Gokrishna. Mm, yes. And so, mm. uh, just find a comfortable position, really. It's, you will, we will park our body for a, a little time. Nice if you can lengthen your spine a little bit. Those of you who like details, you can even lengthen your neck a little bit by tucking in your chin like that. And just uh, arrive in the present moment. I think we all had a day with that behind us. I know some of you were just arriving from Mexico yesterday and you might still be a little bit tired or think of tortillas and so on. Just uh, center yourself now. A very peaceful time is very peaceful meditation. It's, it's like your whole mind will relax and your body will relax and you will refresh and recharge yourself. So it's time for you and the spiritual experience which is about to happen for you. Hmm? The ancient Meditation texts say we should withdraw our vision from the outside world. The easiest way for us modern people is to just bring our mind, it's called samharana in meditational language, to our body. That's the easiest way to center ourselves because we are surrounded with our body. So just feel your feet, relax them. Move with your attention up to your sitting bones. And relax everything on the way. The knees, the thighs. Then move up with your attention. Through your lower back and the upper back. Part, relax. Move in front to your belly. Relax. Your chest. And the space between your chest bone and your spine. Just uh, Relax all that which is there. Lungs, heart, your shoulders, arms and hands. One movement, your shoulders go down, elbows, hands, relax. Back of your neck, back of your head, top of your head, relax. And your face and everything which is in there, eyes, mouth, and inside, tongue. Relax and for a moment appreciate how you are incredibly aware but at the same time your body relaxes, relaxes. Now 
want to relax our mind a little bit more. It's still so full with so many oppressions, perhaps even resistance. Just breathe in and out. Try to walk with your breath as you're breathing in. And then as you slowly exhale, just be with your breath. Slow and gentle inhales. And a long exhale. yet connected your mind with your breath. I can feel it very much. Try to bring your mind to your breath. When, when it's in, you inhale, just say to your in, and stay with the breath as it flows in. Bring your attention to the heart area now and find back to your natural breathing rhythm. It's here in the heart. Now all the spiritual discoveries are possible because it's here where the true self resides the Lord resides. So just focus on that place in the heart. And as you breathe in, feel some lightness and spaciousness. to stay with your breath, not with your thoughts. Some of you are still thinking, almost as if you're Germans. Just think breath if you have to think something. Focus on your heart space. As you breathe in, see a light. Almost as if there is a sun inside. As you breathe out, see the light spreading through your entire body. And in this light, try to place this ancient text. It's a text meditation which we will do. The divine self-manifested abode of Vrindavan defeats the effulgence of millions of suns, moons and fires. So much light, sun, moons, fires. It is inhabited with trees and creepers, filled with fruits and flowers that shower spiritual happiness. Try to catch some happiness. The 
birds, like the cuckoos, sing sweet songs on the fifth note. Everywhere one hears the sounds of Krishna's enchanting flute. That flute sounds satisfies the ears of everyone. There are peacocks who make sweet sounds to the flute. Beautiful mountains, rivers and lakes full of nectar. And there's a temple of jewels, is there? A temple made from jewels. It stands underneath a desire tree. In this temple is an effulgent throne. And on the throne is Sri Radha Rani. Shri Govinda, Radha Govinda. They are not alone. And they are served by their most confidential associates. One is waving a chamara fan. Others offer sweets. Please, as you approach this throne in this temple of jewels, offer your humble obeisances to them. You may pay a dandavat, make a smaller obeisances, fold your hands, Sing to them the nice Hare Krishna which we sing a moment before. Oh, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama
Yeah. 
Hari, one more time, please. Jai Jai Radhe. <laughs> I know them all these songs. <laughs> yes. Our life. We have to that. It is there embedded in the cultures of uh, all the wisdom traditions on earth. Now for to facilitate this uh, in his great mercy the Lord has manifested tirtas or crossing points or holy places uh, however it's important that we don't just go there with our bodies it's good to go there with the body but it's good in order to create a space through spiritual practice uh, where we will be able to go uh, really make this crossing because if you don't cross in your mind, you will not cross in your body. <laughs> you will be uh, 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 one of these many uh, touristic pilgrims. Mm. So this is why this lecture was called Pilgrimage, uh, Crossing Over the Threshold. There are some spiritual techniques which we have briefly mentioned, but mostly it will be mercy. So I know some of you have to run, and not all of you are very polite, so I will have to end here <laughs> so that you can run easy, nicely. Uh, thank you all for being with us um, and uh, uh, taking part in this program. I will end here. I thank all of you on the internet. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it was useful for you. And perhaps we will see each other in Brindavan either this year or in the coming years. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.